The diagram shows its covalent bonds in an organic compound. The total number of electrons in one molecule of this compound is blank. The total number of electrons in the bonds in one molecule of this compound is blank. So the second one is easier. Let's start with the first one. You have two carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, six hydrogens. The proton number for carbon is six. That means each atom would have six electrons. Same for hydrogen. So six times one. That is uh, 12. This is six. Add them together. I think you put the plus sign on the other side, don't you? 18. So you should have 18 electrons per molecule. And how many are bonded? Each bond is two. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six bonds, right? So you should have 12. So you see 12 here for Y and you see 18 here for X. The correct answer is C. Oh my God. It is indeed C. Which of these contains the greatest mass of oxygen? So you have moles of different substances. You can figure out. So the largest amount of moles, if you have the largest amount of moles of a substance, like largest amount of moles of oxygen in a substance of oxygen, then that would equal to the largest amount of, largest mass of oxygen indeed so we just need to find out the largest moles of oxygen over here and we'll find our answer so over here you have three in every nitrate and you have three nitrate per aluminum so the total count of oxygen let's do counts of oxygen first real quick there are nine over here there are four over here there are three over here and there are three over here right and each is being multiplied the moles they have it's being multiplied by 0 0.2 it's being multiplied by 0 0.3 this is being multiplied by 0 0.4 this is being multiplied by 0 0.5 0 0.5 times 3 is what what is it 1.5 so that's out right i'm gonna guess this is out as well uh, 9 times 0.2 that's 9 over 5 need a calculator for that uh, 9 times 0 0.2 is 1.8 okay I think I'm right let's just confirm the other two 4 times 4 times 0.3 it's just a math thing right now 1.2 is I'll also do that. that's 1.2 and 3 times it can be higher than this one, right? So I won't do this one. Okay, so it's 1.8. Correct answer is A, because it contains 1.8 moles worth of it, and that's the largest, so hence would have the largest mass. Which sample contains the most water, uh, so most atoms, right? So water has, water has three atoms, my word it has three atoms carbon dioxide also has three two oxygen methane has five atoms and hydrogen chloride has two atoms we have to multiply it by each of them by their moles so this is 0 0.5 this is one this is one i think this one c one and two so all of this equals to 1.5354 so this one's way easily correct answer is the correct answer is c aqueous copper sulfate is electrolyzed using copper electrodes the current is constant see that's important current is the flow of charge or flow of electrons right that's literally what current is if current is constant the change in mass is going to be constant because electrons dictate how the reaction is taking place and the anode is weighed at regular intervals so anode for copper is gonna do what 
it's gonna actually lose mass. Copper will be able to give out its electron to form copper two plus and produce two electrons. <clears throat> That's the reaction of the anode. It's gonna lose mass and it's gonna move linearly because the current is constant. Even if it's not, the current is constant anyway, right? Correct answer is C. Which row correctly describes the solubilities of both ammonium sulfate and sodium carbonate in water? Both are soluble. Ammonium sulfate causes is in fertilizer, right? And sodium carbonate is known to be a soluble carbonate. Correct answer is D. Ethanoic acid reacts with propanol. What is the name and what is the structure of the acid produced? So ethanoic acid with so the idea about acids are is that it gives you a something aisle and something noate. And the, this is the alcohol part. The alcohol turns into alkyl, right? And the acid in the carbonoic turns into carbonoic turns into no eight so this is the acid part so you have ethanoic acid it's gonna be ethanoate ethanoate ends already there and propyl that's the correct name okay propyl ethanoate is here and propyl ethanoate is of course here what is the correct structure? You break an ester between the carbon and the oxygen, the same carbon with the double bond present and the oxygen. So you'll break all of these here. I don't have to break all of these. Okay, so the first one, this is the acid part. How do I know it has the carbon double bond? It has three carbons. So that's propanoic acid. This is actually ethyl propanoate ethyl propanoate propanoate the correct answer is actually C because that contains ethanoic and propanol the equation shows the production of iron by the reduction of iron 3 oxide great 80 tons of iron oxide produces 50 tons of iron what is the yield you know, let's be clever about it. Whenever they say tons, I go with grams. Makes my life easier. Then if I need to, I'll convert at the end. So <clears throat> this is what was produced. I gotta figure out how much would it have produced, right? I wish they had given the MRs. So it's just a molar comparison. Fe2O3 to two iron. So the ratio between them is one to two, right? So what is the MR of each? So the MR is 160 for iron oxide and 56 over here, just the MRs, right? But I'll multiply these MRs with the molar ratios. I'll tell you why. So 160 MR gives me Iron's equivalent of MR, uh, 112, right? So that would mean if I have a 160 grams, if I have 160 grams, I'll get 112 grams. I actually have 80 to begin with, so it should give me half of it, which is actually 56 again. So it should give me 56. That's what I was expecting or should have been expecting, right? But I actually got 50. So the math is 50 over 56 times 100. I'm gonna guess that's very close to 89. Yeah, correct answer is 89 D. Silver is below hydrogen in the reactivity series, which will describe chemicals used and the method of separation used to prepare Pure sample of silver chloride. Silver chloride from lab, you know, is a 
white precipitate. So silver and hydrogen chloride uh, will not react actually because silver is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So this reaction won't take place so you cannot further process it out. Silver and, okay again we're out. Silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid crystallization. It already forms a precipitate. It won't dissolve in water so you can't saturate it. You can't saturate something that doesn't dissolve, right? So silver nitrate D by default is winning. But let's see, silver nitrate and hydrochloric acid and you filter it out, right? Because it's a precipitate. AG silver, AgCl will form a PPT. And you can just filter it out. Correct answer is D.